have to understand the interest rate relationship to the price of the bond, right? It says interest rates go up, the value of the bond goes down, and vice versa. So we have to be able to show that in a multiple choice question. Uh, let's see, also, chapter seven, we're gonna have to know how to calculate a yield to maturity, given what, you know, a, a bond that is, has payments, unless it tells you otherwise, payments are twice a year with the bond, and as you'll have to figure out what the new interest rate is, given a market price, or vice versa, where you're given the new interest rate, and you need to figure out the price of the bond. Quick question. So, when you mean uh, pay twice a year, so if we had to do a bond, we'd do two payments a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in this exam, you're going to have to talk back and forth like bonds will have two payments a year, stocks are one payment a year, cash flows for operating budgets are one year. So, that's a good point. Be sure that you're on the, you have the right number of payments going on. Chapter seven, also have to understand the components of interest rate risk, what you're getting compensated for. Uh, the parts of that are inflation, your real rate of return, the credit risk of a bond, and liquidity of the bond. I went over this in one of the, one of the slides. Then we have the Fisher effect, which is just component one and component two, which is the inflation rate and the real rate of return. So multiple choice question, we say according to the Fisher equation, uh, what comprises the interest rate? That would be inflation and real rate. Or if they're asking you all the components of interest rates, then they might ask you about credit risk and liquidity risk. Chapter eight, uh, stocks. You're going to have to know how to price a stock when you just have one dividend growth rate. That's the simple you know, dividend discount model. That's what's on this slide right here. Uh, stock equals uh, P0, where that's dividend 1 over R minus G. And dividend 1 is simply the dividend now, or D0, one times 1 plus the growth rate. We'll go through some examples of that as well. And all the index cards will be posted along with the example from us. Then you're going to have a complex problem like this one from Chapter 8. I, I promised you this, where you have different discount rates or, excuse me, different growth rates for the stock, where I'll give you several uh, dividends. You might have two dividend growth rates. You have to show me what the stock is worth, where it grows forever, and then you have to discount the stock to what it's worth now, P0. So in this case, growth forever starts at P5. So if P5, have a, a stock that grows forever at 4% at period 6 times period 6. That means you can step back one period, figure out what the price is at P5, then put all your dividends in P5 into your calculator under cash flows, discount it back to zero to give me the price of the stock. We'll go through an example of that too. Chapter 9. You probably have a long set of multiple choice where these were the budgeting techniques that we went through last week, where you have to figure out, given a set of cash flows, what's the net present value, what's the internal rate of return, what's the payback period, what's the dividend, excuse me, what's the discounted payback method. You're gonna have to calculate those. I'm gonna go through a set of those as well. And you need to tell me what the advantages and disadvantages are on those. You should be able to find those on your PowerPoint somewhere. Finally, chapter 10, 
sorry if your my Wednesday class will go through three long tedious examples and a couple examples tonight as well. So there are three cash flows that you need to be able to show me. It's going to be a one page question, about 22, 25 points. And it goes as follows. You have to understand for your initial cash flow, when you're buying a project or buying a piece of software, a piece of equipment, you have your initial cash flow. That's your cost of buying that item, plus what it took you to put that in the ground or implement it. That's your working capital. Those are both negative cash flows. You add those together, that's a negative initial cash flow. Then we talked about operating cash flows last test. Now you're going to use it again. You have to come up with the operating cash flow for that project, for the life of the project. That would simply be figuring out the net income, adding back your depreciation to get your operating cash flow. You're going to probably have to take out the tax expense that you get in the tax rate. So that's simply knowing how to get to net income, taking out the depreciation beforehand and figuring out your taxes, and then adding it back to get your operating cash flow. Finally, the more probably the more difficult uh, cash flow is the terminating cash flow. Again, don't worry if you're my Wednesday section will go over a lot tomorrow. <clears throat> you need to the terminating cash flow is what you receive when you sell that project or that piece of equipment. That would be the amount you receive plus or minus the tax you are, you pay or the tax you receive back because you sold it at a loss. Plus, that's where you would also add back your working capital. So remember that you need to subtract out your working capital from the initial cash flow and then add it back for your terminating cash flow. So I will ask you for, show me you know how to figure out the initial cash flow. Show me the operating cash flow. Show me the terminating cash flow. When you put all those, I told you this was the most difficult part, and of course it is. We put all those probably on a timeline, or hopefully you'll be able to keep them straight out, but if you can't. So you're going to have all those cash flows on a timeline, discount them back with the required rate of return that you're given. Tell me if it's what its net present value is, and whether or not you do the project. Now we know that if your net present value is positive, you're going to do the project. You have to get all those, discount them back, show me the net present value, say yay, yay, yay. So that's the concepts and the uh, formulas you need to know for the test. So what I'm going to do now is go through.